turning over to chapter, to page three, page three in your manual, we get into and dig into deeper into the paragraphs of understanding concerning faith. And let me give you some premise here. We are sons of God. God has given unto us Jesus' faith. We are to grow in faith, learn to use faith, learn to reign and rule. That means to use faith, uh, reign and rule with Christ, using faith. We are to do all of these things as we continue to seek after God and He imparts unto us and, and blesses us as we diligently seek Him. Page 3, the definition of faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now faith is the substance. So faith actually has the ability and the power, the transforming, miraculous power of God to turn itself into the very substance of what you hope for. The very substance of it. And then when you have that manifested unto you, what you are hoping for in the Word of God, what that part of the Word of God it is, is manifested unto you, you no longer have faith. You have the object of your faith. You have the object of your faith. Okay? So faith has a vision, and its vision is to become what you hope for, in the promises of the Word of God. Faith is also the evidence of the things that you don't yet see or perceive with your senses. Faith is that evidence. Like a photo ID telling you about a person that either did exist or does exist now because there's the picture of the person. There's their identification of the person. All right, so faith is the evidence of that which you don't see yet you don't you, i've never met the person that i've got the photo id of i just found it on the street i've never met the person but the photo id tells me and gives me the evidence that person actually did exist or does exist now and so faith tells me okay faith is the very evidence of what i hope for that what i what what I don't yet see with my senses is not yet manifested into the physical, uh, and I don't perceive it with my senses. Faith still is the evidence that it exists, <clears throat> and that I can have it. Now, the biblical word hope is not merely wishful thinking, as the common meaning for the word today would have you believe. The word hope in the Greek is elpis, which means to anticipate usually with pleasure, to expect with confidence or assurance. This meaning from the scriptures makes the word hope a very powerful agent. Hope, which is our assurance and confidence in God's word, gives life and reality to our faith. Hope, which is our assurance and confidence in God's word, gives life and reality to our faith. Turn with me over to Romans chapter 8. Here it's talking a little bit about hope in verse 24. For we are saved by hope. Well, we have also see that we're saved through grace by faith. We're saved by faith. We're saved by the blood of Jesus. Here we're saved by hope. So all of this kind of works together. When you find an area in the scripture that, that gives you several different perspectives of the same thing is because God wants to develop in you a revelation. A revelation. Like I have mentioned to you already several times how, how uh, this is a living kingdom and every, every thing that belongs to God, that is of God, that is God's, Okay, or is a servant in the kingdom of God. It's a living being. It's a spirit. Now, I'm, I'm speaking to you, and I'm showing you all these different scriptures talking about it. Here we're talking about and dealing with the spirit of faith. A spirit of faith. It says, we have the like same spirit of faith, wherefore we, we uh, speak forth the word. And, and faith is given to us. It's a spiritual being. It's given to the sons of God as a servant. It's a servant of God. It's a chief servant of God. Grace also be in a spirit. Here we see that if we are saved by hope, hope what is seen is not hope. 
For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for it? Now, that means seeth means that I've got it. In other words, it's, uh, I've got the thing coming to me. All right, in Psalm 16, 9, Therefore my heart is glad, and my glory rejoices. My flesh also shall rest in hope. Hope is a spirit. Everything in the kingdom of God is a living creature. The Word of God is alive, and the Word creates living beings. Now, we are sons in our Father's kingdom. So, for us to begin to realize that we're not just talking about some earthly hope, some fleshly hope. See, the world has got this false hope. It's not the real hope. It's not the hope from heaven. It's not the hope from God. God is the living God, and hope is a spirit. Let's go to the next paragraph. The absolute assurance, the absolute assurance of the infallibility of God's word is what our hope is based on. Our anticipation and in expectation is rooted in this infallibility. Now that word means inerrancy, uh, it means it can't be wrong. There's no doubt or shadow about it. It is completely upright and true and positive. And because of that truth, we are able to find peace and rest as we put forth our hope. Therefore, our hope is not in vain, but founded on the only true reality, which is God's word. How can we measure such a thing as the only true reality? Well, uh, this is a physical reality. We see that anything that's in the physical realm is, is passing away. The reality of it is only for the day. It's only for the season. But we're talking about the reality that exists from before time. The reality that is in God and in the kingdom of God that we cannot necessarily partake of all the time because our main focus of our reality is, in our, is in, our, in our physical way. But the physical reality passes away. So here it talks about that this is God's Word, which is the only true reality. God's Word. So with this understanding, it's easy to see that faith becomes a reality. Not just a reality, but the very substance of the things hoped for. Because our hope is established, set firmly into the absolute truth of God. Now, these are big words. You've got to stop and think about these words. Absolute truth of God. Absolute truth. The Word of God is the fullness of truth. His existence and His Word. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Here I'm going to read an Amplified Bible. Since we have such glorious hope, such joyful and confident expectation. Let's read that in the King James. 2 Corinthians 3, but let's go back to verse 8. How shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? For if the ministration of condemnation be glory... Much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. Verse 10. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect, by reason of the glory that excelleth. Verse 11. For if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remaineth is glorious. Seeing then we have such a hope, we use great plainness of speech. Now this hope says that these three remain. Hope, faith, and love. Now when it talks about glory, you've got to understand. Have you ever heard that old concept about the psychic man, the psychic world, how how they have these auras around the soul? Have you ever heard about that? I'm sure somebody's mentioned to you about auras, that they could see auras around somebody's soul. Well, in the spirit world, Everything has a glory, whether it's dark or whether it's light. 
All right. God was talking about in the scriptures here that there's a glory of the sun, there's a glory of the moon, there's a glory of the terrestrial uh, of the heavens. Uh, here it talks about the glory of a revelation, the glory of uh, the word of God, and more specifically, glory of hope. Now, I told you that hope was a spirit. Now, if we think about what is glory, well, when we think about glory, we think about uh, a, a, a light that is beautiful and brilliant and bright. In, in other words, uh, when Jesus was transfigured on the, mount, on the mountain there, the, the men saw him uh, in his glory. In other words, this, this outshining round about him glorious light. Now, that's a way to express it or the way that I can define it to you. But actually, the glory itself is, is the outshining of the very thing that it is outshining. It, in this case... Hope has a glory. A glory. So verse 12 says, Seeing then that we have such a hope, we have a hope that is glorious, that has glory. That's kind of a little sidetrack there, but I wanted you to understand about what glory is. We have glorious hope. This means this is a living hope. It's a living spirit of hope. And it's, it's outshining uh, light that goes around it. We can call it glory. Just like you would look at the throne of God and you could see the glory coming around out from, from the throne of God. The light, the, the essence of the life itself, the, the glory. And that's what the word glory is. The outshining of the presence of God. And here we have such a hope. In Hebrews 6.19, in the Amplified Bible, it says this. Now we have this hope as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul. It cannot slip, it cannot break down under whoever steps out upon it a hope that reaches farther and enters into the very certainty of the presence within the veil. Now we have this hope, which is an anchor of the soul. So hope comes to us. And has the ability to hold our soul steady. Hold it in position. Hold it in a place that it doesn't wander off. That it doesn't take off in transcendental meditation or something. That our soul actually will be held by hope. Waiting for the spirit to reproduce itself. To, to bring forth its outshining into the soul. See... We're made up of mind and will and emotions in our soul. Our spirit man being one with God, then from our spirit out into our soul, our spirit is, is transmitting and it's imparting its nature, its likeness into the soul. So that in our soul, we're learning to have the mind of Christ, the emotions of Christ, and the will of God. Or the will of Christ. Our soul is being transformed into the image of Christ. So that's our hope. That's what the basic foundation of hope. Now, we know that, that uh, uh, we can hope for all of these specific areas. Little specific areas of the promises of God. But the big hope that we have. The thing that it encompasses the, the major part of hope. Is that our hope is, is Christ in us. The hope of glory. Okay, Christ in us, the hope of glory, that we will be like him, that we will be of same nature, we'll be the same kind of a creature, we'll be members of him, partakers of him. That's the hope within us. So that's the big part of it. Now, individually, we can hope for healing, we can hope for prosperity, we can hope for renewing in our mind. All of these are specific promises of God that have hope. But we're given unto us a sure hope, which is a sure foundation for our soul. Down at the end of page 3, knowing our hope is sealed within God's word, sets the sure anchor of our soul by making alive in our heart the truth. What God's word says is what God's word does. Now listen carefully. What God's word says is what God's word does. God's word is alive. God's word is a living being. So what his word says is what his word does. What his word does 
is what his word says. You are a son of God. You are created by God's word. What you do is what you say. What you say is what you do. And that is because of what you are. You are sons of God. And as you grow in the revelation of this, you will see that what you are and what you do and what you say are one. That's also, let's go back to the paragraph, that's also why faith becomes the evidence of things unseen. Faith, the evidence of things unseen. We have the full assurance of faith. We have a sure anchor for our soul to keep us in a place until our faith can be made manifest. God's promises, when set in hope, are completely reliable. 